of course, now that we got all the sci-fi shit out of the way, we have people talking with each other, and we have bitch face and Captain talking under this weird thing where he has an accordion, and this is what I remember, because he has his accordion, and he wonders if Bitchface is also an android like David. And she, you know, takes offense to this. And the captain basically says, man, you need to get laid. And she's like, you know what? I'm not going to admit you're right, but I'll be in my room in ten minutes. Not line for line, but... So the black guy with his corner is like, awesome. It was just so random, like, they had been basically going back and forth about how she's such a bitch and how he doesn't get it about, you know, or... And then, all of a sudden, sex. And it's kind of foreshadowed of what happens next. Like, or what's going to happen next. Like, Shaw's boyfriend is really bent out of shape for not getting much done on the first day. And, you know... They might be here for months, and he starts brooding, and David in his room is doing really fucked up shit with what he collected in the giant cylinder tubes. So, he basically spikes some alcohol with, like, alien fetus, or alien juice, or sperm, or jizz, or whatever, and, you know, he gives it to Shaw's boyfriend. And he ends up drinking it, you know, there's nothing really to suspect there other than David being completely fucking evil. And later that night, Shaw and her boyfriend have sex. Because, you know, having alcohol and allowing sex on an important, heavily funded space mission uh, sounds like, you know, freedom. Like, people should be free to do that rather than pay attention and not waste money and not get drunk on the job. But... That's Prometheus. They have sex, and the morning after, or whatever time this is, like, Elizabeth's boyfriend goes to the mirror, and he has weird things, he feels weird, and he has his, he looks into his eye, and this little squirming worm thing goes by, and the audience knows, like, oh shit, like, no, no, the audience doesn't go, oh shit, because we knew that, we knew David spiked his drink. There's nothing to expect. There's no surprise. Like, there's no suspense. <sighs> I'm sorry I'm getting riled up, but the no suspense thing runs this movie. It goes on. Like, they just can't trust the audience to just sort of assume anything. Like, <sighs> like, there's no, there, like, even with your jizzy tubes in the giant tomb of evil here, they're already shaped like eggs. We already know that there's stuff inside of them because they're shaped like eggs, and they're placed around in a format where, again, Ridley Scott and aliens, you know they're eggs. You know there's bad shit in, inside of them. So all suspense is basically lost. Uh, the giant stone head no suspense as to knowing what the alien, what the engineers are. It becomes this. It, oh, it just starts to get frustrating in this movie. It's not even like, it's not even there yet. Like how bad it can really be, because I mean we already killed two. If you if you're keeping up with me, we already killed two of the major suspenses here. All right, inside the giant dome, we have our two geniuses, you know, or, I can't even be sarcastic with that. We have our two dumbasses inside who are just sort of looking around. People complained that they thought that they were lost because, you know, they didn't have the little, because they used the tracking dogs or little orbs. But honestly, I can see that they weren't really lost. They were just stuck inside because of the stupid storm. Uh, and suddenly, one of, one of the tracking orbs finds or detects life. And the captain says, you know, oh man, like, it says here that uh, a life form has been found in one of the tunnels. And the two dumbasses are freaking out like, oh my god, well, where is it? What's going on? And, like, minutes ago, some scene passes by and then it's gone. It's basically just vanished. And the captain's like, well, looks like nothing's here. I guess, uh, 
guess it must have just been the fact, uh, you know, something wrong with the, the beacon or something. And it's never that. You're watching a horror sci-fi shit movie. It's never just gone. It's never, it's never technical difficulties. So, again, the suspense is non-existent. The two dumbasses go back into the main chamber with the cylinder eggs and this weird uh, oily swamp thing that covers the rest of the room. And they're looking around and the skinhead says, you know, or the skinhead needs to relax and the guy with the glasses notices a smell of pot. The skinhead has a connect, like, you know, has marijuana air or some kind of drug hooked up to his oxygen tank. And he just takes a while to toke it up. And, you know, dur -her -her, ooh, we got drugs in this movie. And it doesn't, it's not even that funny because it doesn't last long. They don't do anything with it. They don't do anything stupid. Like, they don't have them, like, trip balls or anything. But in, in the dark of this swamp oil thing comes little tentacle creature. And... Uh, it's kind of phallic, but it looks more like, you know, an alien sperm. And the guy with the glasses is completely astounded by this. It's just like, oh my god, like this, look at this, this is amazing, like this is life, it on a, it's alien life. I mean, he is just completely like blown out of balls that there's other life out there. Uh, despite having giant spaceships being able to go to other planets to find other life out there. But this, uh, this is basically his, his cherry pop of, oh my god, aliens. So he is, you know, like, cooing this thing, like really trying to get it calm and get a closer look at it. And the guy with the, the mohawk has a better idea of just, like, get the fuck away from him, man. Like, this is just, this is not fucking good. And you as the audience know, this is not fucking good. But, of course, guy with the glasses goes in closer, and, of course, it springs onto his arm, starts to constrain it, gets into his tube, and basically, choke, like, kills the fuck out of him. He's dead. And the guy with the mohawk is basically screwed and follows along with. I think basically he takes acid to the face and it melts away at his helmet and you know he just falls over dead while the other guy's being eaten. And that's them. A lot of progress done. We have uh, sperm aliens. Prometheus! So, the other team that was able to get safety from the giant dust storm or whatever goes back into the dome for more progress and stuff, but Shaw's boyfriend isn't really doing so well because he's incubating the next litter of whatever. 